mondo intero non solo te Mrs. Mackenzie? Hello? Mrs. Mackenzie, are you there? Mrs. Mackenzie? Ma cos'è sta televisione? È tutta accesa, un casino. Un bordello sta gente. E non penso a nient'altro, ma che... Mrs. Mackenzie! Mrs. Mackenzie! Mrs. Mackenzie! and I would love to help, but the problem is I'm not officially here yet. Well, it could be a matter of weeks. Look, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't actually do that. You'll have to go back to the main hospital switchboard. Dr. Graham, I'm so glad to have caught you. Oh, hello, Dr. Henderson. Your office is going to be splendid, you know. Yes, yes. I'm quite surprised, though, at how far behind things are. It's another two months, I'm afraid. Really? But the new post-trauma unit is causing quite a stir. Everybody's green with envy that I managed to lure you down from London. Oh, well, I hope they forgive me, then. Look, I'm sorry, I've got to go and pick up my dog. I just want to say how thrilled I am that you're going to be part of it. Thanks. in the marsh. They think so, Jane. Come on, my little tweaky nose, let's get changed. The bodies of Victor and Elizabeth Mackenzie were found at 8.30 this morning by their Italian cleaning lady. Their 19-year-old daughter Fiona was found alive and is now in hospital. Victor Mackenzie was the chairman of Carlo Biomedica a pharmaceuticals company which tests its drugs on animals. Carl, what have you got? Well, from what I could see, uh, the cause of death in both victims is exactly the same. Anemic anoxia due to throat cuts by a non-serrated blade. And the girl? Her throat was cut, but they say she'll live. Um, nothing sexual. It wasn't that sort of crime. If she survives, the girl may tell us. Well, meanwhile, until she's fit enough to give a statement, we could pretend we're policemen. Or police women. I will if you will. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, Sam. This is Detective Inspector Baird and this is Superintendent Matthews, who's head of the local CID. Have I been burgled? <laughs> All three victims were savagely attacked. It's a miracle that the daughter survived. So we have a 19-year-old girl, Fiona Mackenzie, whose parents were murdered three weeks ago. It's a shame the unit is not running to treat her. We don't necessarily need a unit, Dr. Graham. Problem is, there are no near relatives. She's also refusing to see anyone. She's allowed her GP a family friend to visit, but that's it. Well, it's a start. 
I'd say she should be encouraged to restore outside contact as soon as possible. Thanks. So. How's her mood? Well, she's still not speaking much. She has limited recall. Mm -hmm. But she's physically well enough to leave the hospital. And we're struggling to find somewhere for her. Sort of halfway house, if you like. Mm -hmm. It has to be anonymous and secure, obviously. We doubt the people who killed her parents expected her to be there. She'd only just got back from South America. So, we need to find somewhere suitable. Do you mean here? I have to say, Sam, that your involvement would do the reputation of the new trauma unit nothing but good. And we would put a policewoman in with you. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly have the house turned into a police zone. And it was only to have someone around for when you talk to her. When I talk to her? Do you mean question her? Well, if anything comes up about the murder. I think I'd better make one thing clear. Primarily, what I do is manage depression and anxiety. I don't necessarily believe in counselling. So, if you see me as acting as some kind of criminal investigator, getting her to talk, then it's not going to work. That's not it at all. We need your skill as a doctor. OK. All right. Though you never know, it might help us to talk about it. Although, obviously, that's entirely up to you. for a counselling service to your patients. That really gets to you, doesn't it? Just seems a bit perverse. Plenty of people believe in it. Yes, I know. It's on offer at every second-rate health centre, generally from people who train by watching TV talk shows. I've seen enough bad counselling to know that there's no magic fix. I can't risk Finn because you want a result. Is it true you suspect animal rights people? It's a line of inquiry. You know, I was part of a group of hunt saboteurs at university. Yeah, we know. So how do you know she'll be safe with me? Oh, please don't kill her, Dr. Graham. The investigation's going slowly enough as it is. She'll be okay here. What do you think? Well, you've seen her notes. You're the doctor? No, I'm not the doctor. I'm a doctor. You're a doctor. I'm just a GP, specialising in diseases of the rich. You're the one who knows all about up there. Your notes say she had anorexia, but I gather she's not eating much at the moment. No, there's a history of eating disorders, anorexia before she went travelling and so forth. And with her throat injury, which caused minor lesions to her vocal cords, she speaks only very little. I'm afraid you've really got your work cut out. One thing, Dr. Daly. Please, no, my, my name's Adam. 
Well, Sam, one thing I want to be absolutely clear about, and I told Dr Henderson, is that she remains your patient. I insist on that from the start. Protocol, fine. We're leading to it, shall we, Doctor? stuff in here and Elsie that's my daughter she gets back from school around four and I'm going to tell her what I'll tell everyone that you're Fiona Jones and you're a student staying here is that all right And this fin is a paper animal created by my occasional boyfriend, Danny. And look, I can make the wings flap. Good, isn't it? You'll find these everywhere. safe here, Finn. You don't have to tell me anything. You don't have to do anything. But you are safe. This is a safe house. Then your car's here. You all right? Yes. Danny's just arrived. You're okay to meet him. Danny, this is Finn. Finn, this is Danny. How are you? Hi. Yeah. Service starts at 11.30, so we're in good time. No. I don't know. Finn. Please, Sam. I'm sorry. Where do you go? Go for me. Finn, you can't go on not seeing people. You have to try. It's all right, Finn. No problem, you go back in.
my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. But I need to see her because I go back to Italy soon. Is she all right? I bring presents for her. Well, as I say, if you leave them with me, I'll make sure Fiona gets them. Perhaps I can help. Do you know Fiona? Yes, I do. I want so much to see her. I keep asking, but they say no. Right. Well, I'm sure something can be arranged. I'll talk to the detective. I have no right whatsoever to interfere. We've gone to great lengths to keep this confidential. Invite her around for tea. You might as well tell the whole town. I wasn't suggesting that. I think could go to her. If anyone speaks to Fiona McKenzie, it's us. We have a job to do. Has she said anything about the crime? No, she hasn't. Establish contact with someone from your old life. Oh, that might be a good idea. Don't worry about Baird. Finn seems to be doing really well now. Yes, she is. But I wish I could understand her life better. I like a context. Yeah. Your boss, Henderson, will know about that. Why don't you ask him? What does he know? Well, pretty much everything, I should think. He treated Finn's mother for depression. I'm afraid I referred her. He never mentioned it? No. There was a certain amount of gossip about that. Really? Yeah, well, people gossip about anything around here. Look, I don't know if it would help, but why don't I take you to a drinks party on Friday? You can meet people who knew the family well. OK. Are you sure? Yes. There might be gossip. No gossip belly with me, I'm afraid. Three and a half years divorced. I'll introduce you to the full horrors of rural society. Oh, I doubt they'd have me. Don't be silly. The only thing they might say is, what's she doing with that tatty old GP? <laughs> I'll call. I'm glad you went, but I'm glad I didn't go. Am I your patient? No. You're Dr. Daly's patient if you're anybody's. So what am I doing in your house then? Am I in hiding? A lodger? A friend? A sick person? Well, you're a bit of all that, I suppose. Except the sick person. <clears throat> Mrs. Ferrer, your cleaner? She'd like to see you. She's always really kind. Buys me little things. So you'd like to see her? Yes. OK, good. Padre nostro, che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, che venga il tuo desiderio in terra come sia in paradiso. Castle, that course. 
quite clean. Yeah. That's good, Elsie. How do you remember them all? It's our game, our house. It starts yellow ball in the kitchen, cocoa pops on the phone, cotton rail on the radiator, and we keep adding. It's a very old memory game. You build a house in your head, and then you picture the rooms, you put things in them, and then you add other things. I wouldn't like to walk through a house full of memory, though. I might be frightened. I wouldn't. My house is safe. Buonanotte, Pietrino. Sogni d'oro, tesoro mio. Hello? So, Dr. Daly, Mrs. Ferrer is expecting us for lunch, then, is she? No, no, I said we'd just pop in for half an hour. Are you okay? I'm fine. Nearly there. guilty about Mrs. Ferrer's suicide. Maybe if I'd gone sooner. Finn, no one is to blame. Not you, not anyone. Listen, Sam, do you remember telling me that I could talk about anything as long as it didn't harm me? Nothing out of bounds. That's true. Well, who is Elsie's father? He was a teacher. He suffered from depression. We'd, um... We'd stopped living together soon after Elsie was born. <sighs> Last year, he... He went to London one day. He was all right. He seemed... <laughs> he seemed better. But the idiot had stopped taking his medication and he, um... He threw himself under a train. Listen, thank you for telling me. I didn't mean to be nosy. The truth is, I, I've never talked about it to anyone, apart from Elsie. So, be flattered. It's so strange to be here. You don't need to go into the house. I could pack your clothes for you. No, I want to. The policeman, he kept asking me. I wouldn't tell him. I can remember the noise. A thud and... Oh, Christ, you know what I did when I heard the footsteps? 
put my head under the duvet like a little girl and close my eyes. I just remember pain. Awful pain. <laughs> Why didn't they kill me so? Why didn't they kill me? Hi, <laughs> oh. right, Gov. Good night. take them to Oxfam or something. No, I don't want anybody else to have them. So burn them in the moonlight. Well, I've got to say, you've got a great sense of ritual. <laughs> when I was in South America, I went to this ancient site, Machu Picchu. You go out at the full moon, and they call it Boleto Nocturno. It sounds silly, but I stood there and I felt so strange. The Inca Empire had gone, the Spanish Empire too, and all that remained was me standing there with these ruins in the moonlight. <laughs> I always wanted to go there. And I never have. <laughs> Come on, Finn. Let's burn some more clothes All right. that I can't afford. Yes! Mmm, honey toast again. Elsie, why don't you take a photo of Mummy and me? Oh, yeah, well then. Nice dressing gown. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You try it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny will like that. When's he back? <laughs> oh, don't you start. Elsie's bad enough. Come on, we have to find something for you. Oh, now, this is perfect. No, I could. Yes, you could. At Sylvia's party tonight. Go on. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. We were just shopping. I'm meeting my wife. She's around here somewhere. Anyway, it's good to see you both and drop in and have a chat sometime, Dr. Graham. I'll update you. What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> it's just he probably thinks I'm being a little bit unprofessional. <laughs> Not that you're even my patient, but... But I'm in the way, aren't I? Finn, everything in my life has always been in the way of everything else. <laughs> Come on. Let's go and have some lunch. They say her first husband made his millions marketing manure. Oh, can't you just smell it? What? Manure? Yeah. Stinking rich. Uh, I thought this was your sort of scene. Hardly. I've never exactly cut the financial mustard, as it were. Uh, sorry if I sound bitter. But my wife went off with someone who was much wealthier. Well, thank you for the chance to find out more about Finn. And she actually offered, didn't she? Yes, she was very enthusiastic. No, I think that's right. My dad used to do this all the time. He used to work better, I think. 
that's it, that's the way. And then you unfold it back through there. Hello. And hello. Hey. <laughs> Look what the wind blew in. About time. <laughs> mm. I've got an afternoon off. I drive over to see you, and what do I find? You're out on a date. Not professional, as I hope Finn told you. <sighs> well, you've almost missed me. Oh. Finn made a curry, would you believe? And in return, I've been showing off my talents. I'll have to go now. I'm an early start. But the job will be finished for good in a few days. Right. I'm going to bed. Good night, sweet dreams. Good night, good night. You were staring at her. She's pretty, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. Look. 24 karat paper. It's very romantic. <sighs> but rings make me nervous. Weekend. Will you be here? Wouldn't miss it. My bed has been very, very lonely. See, I have my uses. This looks wonderful, Sam. Mm, I know. Finn did it. Almost without effort. OK, OK. We all know I don't cook. <laughs> so, uh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, a student doing a thesis. Oh, what about? Oh, well, it's not really interesting. <laughs> well, it's about no, the... Sam, um, don't put in another task. Yeah, please. OK, well, it's about traumatic stress, which actually started with what the Victorians called railway spine, the symptoms noted in the victims of train crashes. Then in World War I, it was attributed to shell shock. And what fascinates me is whether or not it was really something new. First they call it something, then they've got something to treat. Very interesting. So you think it's an invention? Maybe. Hmm. So how did you two get together? Oh, someone in my department had heard about Sam's research. I have a background in stats, and Sam had a spare room, so it seemed like a good idea to stay here for a while. <laughs> I'm very lucky. was amazing. I really believed you when he asked you about your research. I just tried to think of what you might say. I hope it was all right. <laughs> I wish I was as good at being me as you are. <laughs> you know, I want all this to go on. What do you mean? Well, what I say... I... I love it. No, don't smile. I mean it, I really do. I love you. And I love being with Elsie and looking after her, and I think Danny is wonderful. 
I just want it to go on and on and on. <laughs> Finn, um... Finn, I'm sorry, but it can't. Anyway, you're better now, Finn. You ready to leave? You won't let me stay. Finn, Finn, I can be your friend. I just can't be your family. This image in my head that won't go away. I see this house. It's the middle of the night. A window sliding up. And I wake up with the tape around my face. And the blade at my throat. Then they move to your room, then to Elsie's. You just stop that, Ben. You have no right to say that. Who are you protecting now, Sam? Uh, me or you? Me. Well, then you know how I feel. Why well, I want to stay? It's not a problem, Sam. Seriously, it's not. She's bound to feel a little torn at the moment. I know. I know that. But it's really strange, Adam. I'm beginning to feel as if someone out there really is after us. I must be picking up on her fear. But last night, I kept getting up and looking out the window. I know. I know it sounds silly. Anyway, she can't go on living with us. I've suggested another fortnight. Right.
you remember to get your packed lunch? Did you? She has gone for a walk. That's what worries me. Look, you better look at these. They were taken last night. Contents have been checked when? A few weeks ago, sir. They were here then, we can be sure of that. We had a license for them. What were they? Twin barrel shotguns, sir. Right, a report. Yes? together. It's stupid, I know, but I'm so sorry, Sam. But now I just don't. Is he there? You did everything for me and I just... I thought I could leave my pills behind me, Sam. I might as well get on and finish what they start today. Get it over with. And we wouldn't be in this. Quick and easy. I want to speak to Danny. Finn? Please put him on. Don't hate me, Sam. Just remember. Finn? Hello? To return the call, press three. Mariner's Hotel. He'll be 
be fine. Kirsty's mum said she'd love to have you. And Kirsty will be there when you wake up. Wouldn't that be great? And tomorrow I will collect you from school. Sorry, I never saw them, but it seems they left an hour ago. The woman rang down very early and asked about Albury Bay. It's a little up the coast. As we've heard, the police have concluded that Miss Mackenzie fired the gun stolen from her parents' home to kill first Mr. Hyde and then herself, either in a suicide pact or in some final act of desperation. The angle of the blast took away some of her head, but dental records and blood typing conclusively identify her as Fiona Mackenzie, who evidently never got over the murder of her parents. Now, I have one final question for her GP, Adam Daly. Dr. Daly, can you summarise Miss Mackenzie's condition just prior to her death? Well, physically, she seemed a little better, but... Yes? Well, I was worried that this was deceptive and that she was still badly affected. And as we know, Miss Mackenzie was unofficially in the care of this specialist in trauma, Dr. Graham. Uh, it's not for this court to attach blame in so tragic a matter. It can only be the subject of regret to all that this Dr. Graham was unable to detect the serious despair behind the mask.
Sam. Uh, Sam, wait. Listen, I phoned you. I left messages. I think we should talk. Do you? Yes, you ran off after the inquest. I gave me a run to your house, but you weren't there. What is there to say? Oh, quite a lot. Listen, you can play the professional victim all you like, and I don't blame you. But at least, let me put my side of the story. So? Please. If he allowed me just one more sentence, I was going to say what expert care she'd had and how few warning signs there were. But you knew how much better she was. Yes, and I told him that she'd seemed to improve. But I could hardly say she wasn't ill. Events proved she was. Is Elsie all right? I've talked to her about Finn. And Danny. I'm just glad for her sake there wasn't more publicity. Sam, I just want to say one thing. Before we met, I read something that you'd written on trauma. And when they told me that you were here, I jumped at the opportunity of getting you to help. And I'd do it again. Sam, we just got to get past this. So when do you start? At the unit. God knows. I'm not sure if I'll stay. You have to. enough loss. I still don't understand why. I'm sorry. The inquest was awful. How are you feeling? I'm fine now. I'm ready to start work as soon as possible. Well, I have to tell you, Dr. Graham, that when the unit is finally up and running, you'll now be working under my direct supervision with joint responsibility. Joint responsibility? Look, I... I do understand. I know the situation doesn't look good, but... No, no, I... I can't do this. Either you let me resume my job, or you must tell me to go. You said yourself things like this can happen. Look, I'm sorry, but there was a very real problem with boundary issues here. As you know, I never understood why Danny Hyde was on the scene. Look, that is none of your bloody business, all right? All right, let's talk about boundary issues, Dr Henderson. You never told me that you were treating Finn's mother for depression. Now, isn't that something you should have mentioned? I mean, I keep hearing rumours about it. I mean, obviously, I disregard them, but... As you should, because they're complete rubbish. Surely, Dr. Graham, it must have occurred to you that many people here expected us to review the terms of your contract, and indeed some of your colleagues here hoped that we would. Bastard. He can't do that. Of course he can. He has every right. You all right? I feel like... I don't know where I am anymore. And, and I don't understand why this has happened to me. Again, she was ill. He wasn't. Just turned out he didn't give a shit about me. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Last time I was here, Danny gave me a little private talk. About Finn? No, about you. Oh. He said he wanted to marry you. That he was waiting for you to get around to the idea yourself. Oh. Well, don't things change? He was a creature of spirit to the last. But that wasn't all. He'd organised a surprise. Wanted it sent to me so you wouldn't find out. Wanted what sent? I wasn't sure if it was for real, so I didn't tell you. And then they just arrived yesterday. And your name's on one of them. Plane tickets for Venice next month. Well, he obviously would have cashed them in. But he only just paid for them. The third. My credit card. But that 
was the last day he was here. Why would he bother Sam if he was running away from you? The mess they made. Took me a long time to clean, and then the police said I shouldn't have touched it. Well, how should I know? That girl didn't seem right. You could see it. She looked upset. And what about him? Never did see him. They had the do not disturb on the door all the time. Heard her talking. So you never saw him or heard him? No. But the mess. There were two people in that bed. Mind you. The bathroom, now think of it. Yes. Her things everywhere, but no man's things. I remember wondering about that. Not even a razor. We wanted me, Danny, to be together. I want to speak to Danny. Finn? I'll go and get some more sashes. OK, bought the tickets. Maybe he changed his mind. But nobody saw him at the hotel. Nobody. Even Finn's depression is wrong because I saw her taking out pills up to the last day and it would have been weeks before they stopped working. Well, who knows what was going on with her. We found traces of another drug in both of them. We think she got it from her parents' house. Benzodiapam. Benzodiapam? The tranquilizer. But I mean... But if he was sedated... Well, I mean, that could be it. He was never at the hotel, and then someone brought him to the beach and killed him. I'm sorry, but that is ridiculous. Why would she cooperate? Who took them there? How, exactly? Well, another vehicle. You think we didn't cover that place? When we got there, there were only two sets of tyre tracks, his and yours, and no other footprints. I'm sorry, Dr Graham, but I've been all over this, and I just don't have time. I've got a murder investigation. over tomorrow. Mm. Don't you want to see her? I see her at school. There are other people I don't see at school. Like who? Like Angel, of course. <gasps> Oops. There. Now she won't come back for a while. You scared her away, Mummy. Oh, I didn't mean to. Why doesn't Angel come into the house? Oh, she does. It's a secret. May I watch my video? Of course you can. Elsie seems fine. Some kids have imaginary friends. Yeah, but it seems to go so deep. Top up? No, I'm fine, thanks so much. You're hitting it a bit hard, Doctor? <sighs> oh, you know. So, did you find out about the benzodiapam? Yes, I think this will interest you. Your boss, Henderson, prescribed it for Finn's mother two months before she got murdered. So, it could have come from the house. I think that Finn might have taken it when she came to get the gun and given it to Danny. But it's hard.
hardly recreational. <laughs> and it doesn't fit with the theory that she was freaking out because of lack of medication. But wait a minute, supposing Henderson was having an affair with Finn's mother and his whole career was on the line and, and Finn knew about it and then she told Danny, well... Are you really so sure it wasn't suicide? It's an overfitted... But now I am convinced that it was faked. And that's why the benzodiapam is so important, because whoever did this had drugged them. OK. So, if Danny wasn't at the hotel, mm -hmm. you think that they got his body to the beach and then go away? Hmm? Mm -hmm. By boat. Henderson has a big enough boat. But... Anyway, I don't even know if you can get a boat in there. Well, then I'm asking you, Adam. The police won't help me. Will you help me? So do you really think it's possible they could have got in there unseen? Oh, I don't know. We'll soon find out. I suppose he could have got the got his boat in close to the shore and walked in in the shallows or something, I don't know. It'll take us a couple of hours to get there. Better get kitted up. Could you get my life jacket? Yeah, sure. Thanks.
No sign of anything. He hasn't come back to the port. Tell me again what happened. Okay. It was very rough. I mean, I'm seasick. And we were hit by a big wave. And that's when I fell overboard. The shore was nearer to me than the boat, so I swam there. That's what I did. You didn't see him in the water? No. No, I didn't. That's it, is it? Well, I hope it doesn't get any more complicated, because we've had enough complications on this case to last a lifetime. And you think this proves that he did it? I saw Danny make that, and he's never been near Daly's boat. Well, that must have been how he got the bodies into the car. By boat. Why don't you tell them what happened? Because... Because they're already convinced I'm hysterical with guilt and anxiety. Can you imagine what they'd do if they knew that we'd actually fought? They could charge me with manslaughter. Well, if he is dead, then it's over. Mummy, did you see a man earlier on in the marsh? No, was he walking? No, he was watching, like a statue. Earlier on? When we came home from school. They watch birds, don't they? Yes. Yes, they do. Come on, let's get inside. boat all right I found it drifting into shore and it's been all over it there's no sign of it and you say fraud have found something well they're going cross-eyed but they think some money has been transferred well from the Mackenzie fortune I thought you'd looked into that yes I did the parents money is untouched but there is a an oddity in Fiona Mackenzie's account a year ago when she was 18 a large amount was settled on her by her parents it looks as if a lot of that's gone not a daily been through a lot of accounts, but it is possible. So, looks like your Dr. Graham was right after all. How did she know about it? You sure it's you don't want me to stay tonight? Journey, well, bring Elsie over, over to us. City, and soon arrive at the lush no, she's got school tomorrow. Don't worry really about it. Welcome. We'll be fine here by ourselves. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it was Finn's. Been meaning to take a look. She never watched it. <laughs> oh, God, I'm not surprised. <laughs> right, Sam. I better get going. Okay. You got everything? Yep. But at the spectacular ruins of nearby Machu Picchu, seven dollars at the full moon will buy you Boleco Nocturno. You can stand there looking. Empire gone. The Spanish Spanish Empire too. Remains is just the Spanish Empire too. And all that remained was me. It was me. It was me. Standing there with these ruins in the moonlight, the moonlight, the moonlight, the moonlight, the moonlight. Jesus. What? Walking she was copying it. <sighs> the hills can sometimes Those exact words. She... She described this great transcendent experience in the moonlight, and... It all came from this. Maybe she was lying about other things as well. And that's why I got her so wrong. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Isn't it? Maybe she just wanted to impress you.
Come in now. But, but what about my daughter? I... Don't worry, Dr. Graham. There's a policewoman on her way over to you. She'll be with you shortly. Okay. Dr. Graham, you saw the lump on his head. He'd been a tired by summit. Kale reckons he was probably stunned. Any ideas? No. Did you hit him? Of course I didn't. As I said, the wave was very big. A veritable tsunami, this wave, Dr. Graham. I'm surprised the coastline's still inhabited. <laughs> Why don't you just tell us the truth? I am telling you the truth. You're asking us to believe he slipped into the water because of this big wave and drowned. No, I'm not asking you to believe anything. I'm just telling you what happened. Where'd you meet Dr. Daly? Where did I meet him? What do you mean? Detective Baird was with me when I first met him. So Daly took you out a few times, did he? Hmm? Did you sleep together? Oh, please. We once went to a party together. I was the one who was suspicious about the suicide theory. Remember? You're going to have to give us a formal statement. They said Daly had received money from Finn. Sarah, I've got no idea. Well, he did have some sort of power over her. I don't know. I'm trying to work it out. <laughs> no, she's fine. Yeah, she slept right through. Yeah, I love you too. game. What's on the kitchen table? A yellow ball. What's on the phone? A packet of Cocoa Pops. And uh, what's on the radiator? A cotton reel. And what's in the fireplace? Nothing. Elsie? I'm not cross, but you did break it. It was only a trick. And tomorrow, after school, I'll play another one. What? I'll make something disappear. Just don't tell anyone, and it'll be all right. There's a clue. And what's the clue? Something she likes that makes you warm, and you... Ooh, ooh, like it too. Who's 
she? Angel? Elsie Graham. Her aunt came for her. Elsie seemed very pleased to see her, too. Her aunt? Yes, she said she was your sister. No, Elsie's not with me. I didn't pick her up. I've been at home all day. Sam, what's going on? Sam? Tomorrow after school, Mum, I'll make something disappear. Just don't tell anyone, and it'll be all right. I remember. Come on, we're going in. We've been through this. It can't be her, it must be someone else. It's her. I know it's her. You've seen the tests. I don't care about the tests. Oh, so we're moving into the realms of the supernatural, aren't we? No, I don't care about the tests because... OK, look. You checked the woman in the car against Fiona McKenzie's dental records and blood. Perfect match. Fine. But what I want you to prove to me is that the person who stayed in my house has died. And that her body was in that car. I'm sorry, am I missing something here? The person who stayed in your house was Fiona McKenzie. Fine, if you say so. Oh, God, I don't even care about that anymore. It's beyond that. You have to prove to me that the girl who stayed all those weeks in my house who wore my clothes and cooked my food and tucked my daughter in bed at nights is dead. That is what I have to know. Because everything, 
everything is telling me that she isn't. That is what I have been feeling for weeks, as I told you. If we were to take DNA tests from her stuff in your house, her recent stuff, would you believe us then? Yeah. Yes. Eat it if you don't want to. Just not hungry. Are you sure your phone's working? It's working. It's just they said they'd call hours ago. Hello? Yeah. Hello? I think, Dr. Graham, you'd better come back here. It didn't match, did it? No, it bloody didn't. Will you be long? No. I'll be back soon, I promise. It's time for you to sleep, night night. Before you go, I think we should play our game. Darling, I'd love to, but I can't. I haven't got time. No, Mummy, we have to play it now. What's in the kitchen? A packet of go go pops. Well, that's changed. What's on the phone then? Um, no address to you. Oh. And what does it say? It says carry on with the game. What's in the fireplace? Someone who wants to see you. What's in the bed? God. What does it say? Look under the pillow. You mean the pillow at home? <laughs> no, Mummy. The pillow here. I'll see what's under the pillow. An invitation. Can I read it? <laughs> of course you can. idea, not the faintest, what her real identity is. We assume they planned it together to get Fiona Mackenzie's money. We don't know how far she was involved. All the way. Otherwise, why go through with it? But... but she had a throat wound. And Daddy had surgical skills. He knew how to make it look bad. The real daughter was drugged, abducted to the boathouse and... later on shot in the head along with your boyfriend. And you were... I was hand-picked, wasn't I? I feel so stupid. The solitary trauma expert. You were perfect. They could keep her with you. Isolate her. And that's why Mrs. Ferrer was a problem. And I helped him all along. Oh, God. Well, we none of us knew. Do you really think she helped kill all those people? Oh, yes. Don't let her appearance fool you, Doctor. She's been cold-blooded, calculated, and the motive was money. She got to you, didn't she? Yeah. I liked her. She was in my house. She played with my daughter. I knew her. I felt something. Something good in her. You know, she may try to contact you. You could come out of this with your reputation redeemed a professional hero. That's not what matters now. I'm past that. 
What do you want? To see her before you do. good for someone dead. I could have gone, Sam. Oh, I could have, so easily, but I wanted to see you. To tell you. What is there to tell me? All right. Well, I'm from London. I was doing a lot of drugs and I met Daly and he straightened me out. And then, well, he... He said he was in debt and that he needed me. But I screwed it all up for him, didn't I? Because of you. He said I liked it too much and he was right. I wanted to stay, Sam, and if you'd have said that I could, then there was nothing he could have done about it. How could you have stayed? 
God, none of it was real. Well, it was real for me. Christ, Sam, I was cut up when you said I had to leave. God, I just... You know, I wanted to be part of something. Danny was pissed. It was all me. He felt so guilty about you. And you know what he did the next day, Sam? You won't believe this. He called daily. And I was stupid, too. I thought Daly would have to leave it now, leave me. But, oh, no, he wasn't having any of that. Look, Finn. Jesus, I don't even know your name. Look. I need to ask you a question. Did you kill those people? The Mackenzies? And Danny? Did you? No. He killed them. And he cut me. He said I had no choice. I couldn't stop him, how could I? I'm glad Daly's dead, Sam. I hope you killed him. Did you? No. Of course not. Oh, you know what I thought when I heard he drowned? I thought... She's done that. <laughs> God, that's another thing she's done for you. And Sam... If you promise not to turn me in, then we can call it over. But they know about you. It doesn't matter. You know, they don't know who I am. I've got some money, too. We could have a holiday. What? Well, we could. Nobody would know. We could take Elsie. It would be a sort of thank you. Far away. A beach. Just get away. Wait. Look, there were lies. I don't deny that. But when I asked if I could stay, Sam, I meant it. I loved it there. Just tell me you know some of it was true. That's all I want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It works because you believe it. But that's the heart of a good performance, isn't it? I mean, Machu Picchu. That was Oscar winning. Just something you told me to learn, Sam. Nothing. Yeah, it was nothing to you, but it was something to me. Like being Danny's lover was something. Being your friend, all something. I'm just asking you to forgive me, Sam. You still don't get it, do you? I just wanted to be with you, Sam. I'm calling them. Bed. I'm sorry. It's not what we thought. What? I can't say more. She's got the upper hand. I have to take everything into account. What are you talking about? She's gone. Look, you've got to just tell me what the hell is going on. I can't take the risk. What risk? Look, I'm sorry. Sam, I'm sorry. If you give the word, we'll come in, but... Mommy! Bed? You want us to come in? No! Elsie! Mommy!
This is what I wanted. Look, Mummy. This is how we talked. Then she told me about the game. Oh, it's, it's just to say goodbye. I wanted it to be just how it was. And then the game will be over. It's a weaky nose. But there is just one thing. You've got to promise not to go into the bathroom. All right? You promise me, Elsie. Promise. Good girl. Clothes in the bath and what looked like blood. Probably gained her an extra minute, not that she needed it, as long as she made sure we kept our distance. Would have taken 50 men at least to seal the grounds off properly. So, what do you want us to do? For me? I don't know. Well, we could put, um... A guard. No, I don't need a guard. She would never hurt us. I know that now. Doctor. Detective. <laughs> Good luck. To who? Her or me? <laughs> Flight 507 to Miami. I'm on my way. <laughs> 